about you. I can't speak for you. But as for me, I am hyped up, I am energetic, and I'm wired up to have a fantastic Friday. Hopefully you are as well. And what better way to do this than to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide than to be on the hottest show on the streets, the best form of Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information you will find anywhere. What is that show called? Well, it's none other than In My Own Words, the podcast with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, coming to you from Tuscaloosa as we stream this live to you via YouTube. And as always, the show more than me, I got the man John Ivory, JP, in the production room, got those beats cold than Omarion's Xbox, Omarion's Icebox, excuse me. So we're looking forward to hearing from you today. 205-448-1358. The number to call in and let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358. As we got a great show planned for you guys on today. Going to have former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays on the show. But as always, we encourage you to smash the like button, give a thumbs up on the show, and hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel that tells us here at TDA that we got to continue supplying you with the best in news, notes, information, and content on your Crimson Tide. It is also because of you, the Alabama football fans, we're over 8,000 subscribers strong here on the YouTube page. But first and foremost, we're going to dive into some updates here on today's show. And for quarterback or former Alabama quarterback Tua Tungavangoa, before he becomes a franchise quarterback or a franchise face or a headline face on a roster for a franchise, he is already pulling in endorsement deals. Tua inking a contract with Muscle Milk and also Bose headphones. So Tua already getting it done, being a face of two major products. Now, I used to drink Muscle Milk at one point in time. Probably have to go back to doing that now, now that two is on the face of that. But in terms of Bose, like Bose, but I'm a Beats guy. But hey, before Tua hears his name called next week, he's already pocketed in some good change from these two endorsement deals. But along with that, Alabama football brings in a huge verbal commitment for its 2021 class for the longest of time. People have been wondering what's going on with the class, how much is the coronavirus really affecting, impacting this class. Will the Tide ever get off the one commitment and gain more and start getting some momentum? Well, it happened on today as Alabama got a yes from three-star defensive lineman Ann Quinn Barnes out of Lee High School in Montgomery at six foot five 300 pounds so defensive lineman and Quinn Barnes joins the 2021 signing class given his verbal commitment to the Crimson Tide as he pairs up with four-star Deontay Lawson the linebacker out of Mobile so Alabama getting some momentum in the recruiting department and Tua Tagovailoa signing those deals with Muscle Milk and Bowles but we dive in now to topic number one and on uh, yesterday, on Thursday, I posted the story to Touchdown Alabama Magazine just basically bringing to everybody's attention the Wonderlick score of Jerry Judy, which he scored a nine there on the Wonderlick test. The test, which consists of 50 questions, it is a time test, an IQ intelligence test that it dives into three forms of cognitive ability, which happen to be math, vocabulary, and reasoning. And... Uh, as I, po- as I posted the story, a lot of people wonder, well, Stephen, why did you post that? Why did you write that? It's no big deal. You could have left that alone. Well, in journalism, in media, in reporting, it's the journalist's job to report the news, whether good or bad. It's our job. Just like in law, just like in healthcare, healthcare professionals, it's their job to take care of the patients. They took an oath to do that. Firefighters, Uh, law enforcement, police officers, even down to pastors, they take oaths to do what they are told or what they are supposed to do. So same thing in journalism. Our job or my job is being to report the news, whether it be no good or bad. And in the sense, just seeing how Jerry Judy, a prominent player, Jerry Judy, one of the big time prospects in this NFL draft, this story came out on him, 
had to put the story out. But along with Judy, quarterback Tua Tagovailoa posted a 13 on the Wonder Lick test, which was the lowest for this year's quarterback class in terms of the draft. Now, the average grades, the average scores for both positions, for quarterback, the average score is between 24 and 26. For wide receiver, the average score is between 17 and 19. Now, while many people would poke fun at Tua and Judy for these low scores, it's not the end of the world. The Wonder League is not the end-all, be-all. It doesn't give everything. And I say this, I say this because... Not everybody does well with standardized tests. Standardized tests are not for everybody. I take myself, for example. I come from a family that we don't do too well with standardized tests. And for the the Wonder League, in terms of athletes, it is the equivalent of the ACT or the SAT for your high school students are getting ready to venture into the college world. And for me, I took the ACT three times. And I was one of those students that studied ridiculously hard for tests. Like I was the guy that was putting quotation marks on stuff and highlighting stuff and underlining stuff and putting stuff in italicis. And I was doing everything I could to make sure, you know, I aced this particular test. And I, in my mind, I knew I was going to ace it just due to I got up each time, had a hearty breakfast. My mom would give me a piece of gum and say, chew this, sweetie. Keep your mind calm. You're going to be just fine. And then they put the test on my desk. They throw the Scantron right there. And what do you know? My mind goes blank. And it went blank every single time. But I ended up getting the 19. It wasn't the end of the world. I go to the University of Alabama. I pursue a career. I pursued my major in journalism, graduated in four years, got my degree. It is mounted on my wall. And now I am in my career doing broadcast journalism, sports journalism, covering the Crimson Tide for TDA. So even though I made a 19 on the ACT, it was not the end of the world for me. And so when I look at Jerry, Judy, and Tua Tagovailoa kind of saying the same things here. They both made low scores, but not the end of the world. We have seen people make high scores on the Wonder League and not really transition well to the next level, that being the National Football League, NFL. And we've seen guys that have made low scores on this test and go on to have Hall of Fame careers. So just looking at this from a quarterback perspective right quickly, Tua made a 13 on the Wonder League. Dan Marino and Jim Kelly, two pro football Hall of Famers, they both each made a 15. And Jim Kelly was one who took the Buffalo Bills to four straight Super Bowl appearances in the 1990s. You have Donovan McNabb, who played for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. He made a 14, well, also the Washington Redskins. He made a 14 on the Wonder League. And this was a six-time pro bowler and a guy that appeared in, a, in the Super Bowl in the 2004 season, 2003-04 season, if I'm not mistaken, despite falling in that matchup to Tom Brady, still had a prolific career. And then you've got Lamar Jackson, the MVP of the uh, NFL season last year, made a 13 on the Wonder League test. So you've got some guys that though they made some low scores, it was not the end of the world. It did not dictate the perception. It did not dictate their rise, their altitude, their mindset in terms of going into the NFL, dominating, being productive, being special. Even though Jerry Judy made a nine on his, you have Julio Jones, former Alabama wide receiver, who made a 15 and is in the prime of his career with the Atlanta Falcons. Reggie Raglan, who, Reggie Wayne, excuse me, who was a big time receiver, made a 13 on the Wonder League. Percy Harvin, kind of your all purpose, purpose guy made a 12. Torrey Holt, who was a part of the greatest show on turf with the Rams that had Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, Ricky Pro. that Torrey Holt made 11. Even down to Keyshawn Johnson, who was a big time trash talker as well as a great receiver, he made 11. So, once again, just because this test score was low for Judy, not the end of the world. And let's be honest here. 
Tua and Judy are not going to enter an NFL roster. They're not going to enter an NFL franchise. They're not going to be asked, okay, guys, uh, solve these quadratic equations. Okay, guys, solve the formula for pi. Okay, guys, put together the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, guys, um, solve for x. Uh, do this trigonometry question right here. They're not going to be asked to do math in the NFL. For Tua, the main thing for him, as long as he can stay healthy, anticipate throws, have passes thrown accurately, precisely, maneuver around, manipulate the pocket, manipulate the eyes of defensive backs and linebackers, put the balls, put the passes in the right spots for these guys can catch, go, make plays, make off-script throws, make ad-lib throws, and just keep himself healthy, protecting his body, using more of that quick game passing skill to uh, minimize the hits taken on his body as long as he can do those things and help teams win games, help teams become perennial playoff teams, help a team you know, win a Super Bowl or multiple Super Bowls if that were to happen, and also you know, be a guy that can be a perennial pro bowler, a perennial all-pro guy. Just do those things that set you apart as a quarterback. He's going to be fine. Same thing. Where Jerry Judy is concerned, if Judy continues to run incredible routes, set defensive backs up with the routes, create the separation upon getting off the line of scrimmage, beating press coverage, catching passes, turning up field, scoring touchdowns, breaking ankles, leading teams to uh, perennial playoff appearances, leading the team to multiple Super Bowls, just being a Hall of Fame type of player, the one that the test score is not going to matter. I mean, at the end of the day, the only math that these two need, or that these two are going to be focused on would be how, be how many stats can they pile up for Tua? How many passes can, can he complete? Can he get a strong completion percentage? Can he have a strong quarterback rating? Can he have a strong passer rating? How many passing yards can he have? How many total yards can he have? How many total touchdowns can he put up? And the biggest thing here, how much money will be in his paycheck so that he can provide for himself and his family? That's the most important math. That's the biggest math that's going to be on Tua's mind. The same thing for Jerry Judy. It's how many passes can I catch? How many yards can I total? How many touchdowns can I get? And most importantly, how much money will be in my contract so that I can make sure I am providing for myself and for my family. Those are the biggest things where math is concerned that these two young men have to focus on. At times, I feel like people put way too much stock in things at times not really all that big. Yes, it's important, but not really all that major, major. For example, when you look at the NFL scouting combine for a minute here, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and of course, you know, outside linebackers, edge guys, you're not really concerned about the full 40-yard dash at the combine. Your main thing is that 10-yard split. Upon the snap of the ball, boom, how quickly can you get off the snap as an offensive lineman, get into your set, get into your base, get into your position, already have that support anchor down to shield defensive lineman away from the quarterback or be a road grader in the run game. In terms of defensive lineman, that first 10 yards, boom, upon the snap of the ball, how intent is your first step, how how incredibly burstful is your, is your first step in trying to make a play, knifing your way into the backfield to stop the quarterback or stop a running back. Same thing with you know outside linebackers. Upon the snap of the ball, how intentional, how effective, how efficient is your first step in attacking the play? You don't really need the full 40, just need that first step. If you can run a full 40, great, but not necessarily the requirement for offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and outside linebackers. They're more so focused on those first 10 yards. So going back into the Wonderlick here, yes, it's a big deal. Yes, it has importance to it, much like the ACT and the SAT have importance to you know, high schoolers looking to transition into college. But just because you don't get the score that you want to get, or just because you did not get the high, you know, major, big score, it's not something for you to beat yourself up about. As long as you can continue to uh, go about life 
and uh, achieve the things that you want to achieve. That's the primary thing. Same thing here with Tua and Judy. With Tua, you know, with Tua and Judy. As long as they go to the NFL and turn in Hall of Fame, productive numbers, marquee careers, nobody will care about what they made on the one of the test score. That's just me. We take our first break here on In My Own Words, the podcast, hottest show on the streets, ladies and gentlemen. Upon our return, we dive into your phone calls, tweets, text messages, thoughts, questions, and concerns after this. Sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in charged up on a Friday in my own words, the podcast. Yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine here in Tuscaloosa. And folks, this is your time. 205-448-1358. The number to call in to let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358. You can also text with that number. Leave a voicemail with that number. If Twitter is your thing, I'm a Twitter person. You can tweet the show directly at in my own words TDA. That's at in my own words TDA. You can tweet me directly at Coaching M Smith. But we got our first call in the queue, and it's none other than Waylon. Waylon. It's Friday, man. What's on your mind? It's finally Friday at TDA. How's everybody doing down at TDA on this wonderful, beautiful Friday, Stephen? Doing just fine, Waylon. I mean, happy news for Alabama and recruiting, getting the uh, the Ann Quinn Barnes out of Lee High School in Montgomery for 2021. Big defensive lineman. So that's a big get there for Coach Saban and the Tide. But also trying to calm some people down about Tua and Judy's Wonderlick scores. Yeah, those scores, yeah, everybody's going to have to calm down about that and not worry about that, and uh, they'll be just fine. And uh, I see uh, we got uh, this little subject is on my mind. We got Mr. Marquise Mays on the show today. What about that? It's going to be fantastic. I- I'm looking forward to talking Tide football, NFL draft, his playing career. I've been wanting to get Mays on here for a minute now, so I'm, uh, I'm excited right now. Yeah, I'm excited because I saw the uh, Henry Rugg story today on uh, SEC Network. You know, the story of his friend and why he holds up the three, you know, when he scores. I think uh, Mr. Ruggs probably was the most athletic wide receiver. This is big in Alabama football history. I think he was one of the most athletic way, but I'll also say, I'll also say this. I don't think people truly give Ruggs credit for his route running. They give him credit for his speed, yes. They give him credit for his athleticism, yes. But Ruggs, I know Judy is known as the complete route runner, but Ruggs can work that tree. He can make some defensive backs look silly. He can put some DBs on skates and catch the ball and turn up field too. So not a lot of people truly gave Ruggs his credit for being the pure route runner that he is no nobody has done that in the store today this clearly showed me you know i reflected back on how athletic he is i know we got a big show and we got to move on here but you know we've talked about mac jones a lot is he going to be able to to, uh, to be able to tote the uh torch as his pass from two on to him and a lot of people has, has put mac you know and maybe in, in the in the uh, passenger seat or maybe in the back seat. But uh, 
Mac Jones is going to be fine. Uh, he knows what's going on. That's what the poem is about today. And uh, uh, I think it's due credit. Mac deserves one. So we'll end our conversation here with our three hearty chuckles and hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. It's blessed. Has a great Sunday. And it's the one is for Mr. Mac Jones. All you skeptics out there. Here we go. Roses are red. The violets are blues. Bama had to it. He made the big time news. All the sports writers and channels in the land are putting down Mac, my main quarterback in Alabama land. So everyone just stop and catch your breath. Mac Jones will hold up the biggest trophy in college football to his chest. All right, Stephen, it's great talking to y'all. Maybe I'll get my buddy to contact you, and he'll be on there from the 92 team, I hope so. And we'll catch y'all again Monday. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye-bye. You be good, Wayland. You be good. Appreciate having Wayland here on the show. We go over the chat line right now on a Friday. We got Jimmy Clay who rides in first with Road Tide. Appreciate that, Jimmy. Sports Talk with Woody coming out of Birmingham giving us a Road Tide. Samuel William Wilkinson, always appreciate him riding in, giving me a Road Tide. I appreciate you, Samuel, doing that. Willie351 writes in, Tua and Judy just press C all the way down. They probably did fresh Prince it. I mean, in the NFL Combine, these scouts are more so concerned about what is your 40 time, what is your vertical, your broad jump, your three cone in terms of change of direction, how you're doing in the on-field drill. So those guys just probably fresh prints it all the way down and put C just to get on the field and do the on-field drills. Now, of course, Tua wasn't able to do the on-field drills at the Combine, but Judy was. So they, they probably fresh prints. I'm not putting it past them doing that. So that, that was a good, funny thought there from Willie351. Let's see here. Let's see here. Samuel William Wilkinson writes in, Stephen, can you ask Marquise what advice would you give to a young wide receiver from Alabama who may be considering, who may be considering the Crimson Tide to play? Because in recent years, Alabama lost because in recent years, Justin Ross and EJ Williams went to Clemson. That's a good question. What would you tell an Alabama, an Alabama native at wide receiver? To stay with the tide. So, Samuel, I will, uh, I'll be sure to get that one to Mr. Marquise Mays here. Jay Lee writes in, you think Alabama lands a Jai Hall? A Jai Hall. It's got a shot to land a Jai Hall, but once again, Justin Smith is the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. So, he has been on Mr. Hall. He has been following his status for a good minute now. I believe, according to Justin, I was talking to him before coming on today, that Hall is, expect Hall is going to announce where he will commit to on Saturday. So keep your eyes on social media for Saturday as Hall will make his announcement on where he will commit to. But according to Justin, Alabama is in a good spot to get Mr. Ajayi Hall. So that's that recruiting nugget right there. Continue to, not, to continue to light us up here on the show. Here we go. Sports Talk with Woody writes back in. How do you feel about Mel Kuyper saying Diggs will fall in the draft? Me personally, I don't think he's a first-round talent. He kind of got killed in every big game. Trayvon Diggs has length. Trayvon Diggs has athleticism. He's got speed. My main thing with Trayvon has always been with every defensive back of the Nick Saban era at Alabama and here recently is just trust the technique you've been taught. You know what to do. You know how to stay in perfect phase. You know how to play the receiver as well as play the football. But the moment that ball is in the air and that receiver's head turns and his eyes get big, that is your cue to turn with that guy and play the football. Now, of course, the LSU game was not a bright one for Trayvon Diggs. Uh, he got burned a bit at times against Auburn in the Iron Bowl. So there were, there were a few games in the 2019 season that were not too kindly to Diggs, but the potential's there, the talent's there, the tool's there. I can see him as an early to mid second rounder. I see Diggs early to mid second round. It just depends on who gets him. Will it be the Las Vegas Raiders? I mean, once again, I've mentioned this, the likes of Mike Mayock was at – Tuscaloosa, um, a lot of times last season, scouting out some players, talking to Coach Saban about some things, looking at some film, looking at some players. So would the Raiders go at Trayvon Diggs? Could be, possibly, but we'll see. 
Um, second round guy to me, me to early second round. But I appreciate Sports Talk with Woody writing that question in. Continue to hit us up here on the chat line. Tony Yayo writes in, is Judy illiterate? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Would not say Jerry Judy is illiterate. Once again, not everybody does standardized tests well. Not everybody. You could study for these tests. You could prepare for these tests. You can do everything possible to, to, to get yourself in the mind frame for these tests. But the moment that test and that Scantron sheet or that test and the timer you know, hits your desk to go, so many things are running through your mind. So I'm pretty sure that Jerry Judy went into this test thinking he's going to do well. He's going to excel, at least make the average score for wide receivers. But, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. Doesn't mean he's illiterate. Just means that he probably just does not do standardized tests well. We continue here with Willie351 who writes in, Diggs was terrible last few games of the season. I could have smoked him and trucked him the way he was playing, arm tackling. <laughs> okay. Okay. Willie351, I get your point. I get your point. A lot of the DBs were arm tackling out there. I get your point. It wasn't just Trayvon Diggs, though he was one of them. A lot of them DBs were arm tackling out there, which is the reason why, which is the reason why, if we have a football season this fall, the biggest thing for the secondary, wrapping up, bringing your arms, making the contact, wrapping up, and proper tackling these opposing players. And hopefully, Nick Saban will be able to have these 14 practices or these 14 uh, OTA-like things in the summer to help with these young athletes. But continue to light us up here in the chat line, 205-448-1358, the number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show. But we're going to go to another break here. Upon our return, we sit down with two-time BCS national champion, former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays after this. want delicious homestyle cooking, sushi, and hibachi, check out Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At home and you can't get away from the TV because the Crimson Tide is about to score? Don't worry. Delivery is also available through Waiter and Crimson To Go. That's Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And make sure you let them know the good folks at Touchdown Alabama sent you. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. And we are back in on a Friday, ladies and gentlemen, from the break. Hopefully everybody's doing well in my own words, the podcast with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we go to the phone lines now where we have a legend, people. Two-time BCS national champion, Former Alabama wide receiver from the Birmingham area, Mr. Marquise Mays, my brother. Welcome into the show. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we, folks, we got Marquise Mays. If you're just tuning in to, in my own words, the podcast, hottest show in the streets here. Marquise, for a lot of players that are that, that come to the University of Alabama to play football, a lot of them state the reason for, I want to play with the best, I want to compete with the best, I want to play for the best. But when you are a hometown guy and you get an offer from Alabama and you play for the, for the university, is it more of, I want to defend home? For me, it was. Um, it was all about, um, they was down when I was coming, when I was coming out of high school, so I just wanted to play for or a team I could possibly change around or help change around. Nothing wrong with that. So when you look at when you look at receivers 
that are coming up, high school athletes coming up and uh, in the Alabama in the Alabama area, and they're considering other schools. What kind of advice would you tell them to, you know, stay at home, uh, go to you know the hometown school, and really kind of you know make a name for yourself and defending home? Just seeing how you know Alabama had a shot at Justin Ross who's from the state, he went to Clemson, had a chance at E.J. Williams from the state, he went to Clemson. So what advice would you give from a homegrown, home state talented receiver to, you know, stay home, uh, go to the University of Alabama, and really prove that you could be something special? I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't tell a kid where where to go. I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't really even give advice on where they should go because I don't, how I look at things is I don't have to be there. So you know what's best for you, and you do what's best for you. Um, maybe those guys felt like those other schools were better, a better place for them. But I would never tell a guy that just to go to Alabama just because I went there or they from Alabama. No, I wouldn't do it. We're live here with Marquise Mays, former Alabama wide receiver, two-time BCS national champion, played from 2008 to 2011 under Nick Saban, if you're just joining in my own words, the podcast. Now, Marquise, tomorrow, Saturday, tomorrow would have been uh, the 14th annual A-Day game at Bryant-Denny, 1 p.m. Central Time, and uh, you know, A-Day means a lot to a lot of people. Of course, you were a part of a lot of these spring games uh, what was your favorite memory, if you can recall? What would be some of your favorite A Day memories? Uh, my first A Day was uh, I was I guess I was introduced to uh, I was reintroduced to to the uh, Crimson Tide family. Uh, I won a co MVP in that game with uh, Greg McElroy that year. And uh, the same year we went on to win the national championship. So that was probably, I say that was my favorite. When you look at this NFL draft coming up next week here, two of the top receivers in this draft, Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs III, both coming from the Tide. Anything from their game uh, that reminds you of yours and just from watching those two, uh, what impressed you the most about them? I would say with Henry Ruggs, it would be the speed, um, and um, just just that uh, no fear. And w with both of them, the, the ability to get off the jam easily, yeah. But those guys are well deserving of what what's about to come to them in a couple of weeks, and uh, I wish them nothing but the best. Which one do you which one do you think comes off the board for it comes off the board first between Judy or Ruggs? Um, I'm not sure I, cause I, I just know how the business works, so it's all it's all dependent on upon who likes who and who in the organization likes Ruggs or who in the organization uh likes uh Judy. But I think both guys uh should come out um eat uh early in the draft. Because both guys are well deserved. And I, I don't I don't think it's a better two receivers in the draft, if you ask me, but I'm not the one making the decision, so now when I when I look at Alabama football, Marquise, and I've been, you know, fortunate to not only cover this program for touchdown Alabama, but also uh, be an avid watcher of Crimson Tide football for a long time here. There are a few players that come to mind as the guys that work really well in space. They just have a feel for when the ball is in their hands in space. Freddie Millens comes to mind. David Deuce Palmer comes to mind. Of course, you yourself comes to mind. Jalen Waddle, you know, among a, a few other guys. So when you were out there playing, when you were as a receiver, when you were returning kicks, returning punts, what would be some of the first few things going through your mind when that ball touched your hands, what maneuvers did you know upon me getting this ball, I'm going to do A, B, C? Uh, I never had that thought. Uh, I just always thought like I got to do whatever I got to do to score. My my first my my initial my initial thing is when the ball in my hand, I this my opportunity to score. So because we had so many F field. And this might be my last opportunity to to score this game. So 
my my mindset was always to school every time it was in my hand. We're live on the phone lines, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in with former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays, who played from 2008 to 2011, two-time BCS national champion on uh, In My Own Words. Marquise, you played with a number 10 at quarterback by the name of A.J. McCarron. And this was a young man that was very confident, you know, knew what he was, uh, grew to be a leader, grew to be a very – Solid player, veteran guy, two-time national championship starting quarterback. And, uh, you know, he was somebody that came in young but grew to be a guy that everybody can count on. So when you look at Mac Jones, the next number 10 who looks to be the starting quarterback in this upcoming season, should we have a football season, do you see kind of the same qualities in Jones that Nod and McCarron? Nah, I would say he. To me, he compared more with uh, Greg McElroy. Um, only because of the situation he he's put in. Like he's a senior this year, I want to say, and uh, that was the same kind of way. Kind of Greg had to wait his turn. AJ only had to wait one year. And when I played with AJ, his first year playing, he was still young and he made he made mistakes, young mistakes sometimes. But he was the best quarterback for us at the time. And uh, so I would compare um, Mac Jones to, to Greg. So, so just, so just in your mind here, what, what made Greg stand out to you? I know he, pro- I know he didn't have the biggest arm, probably wasn't the most athletic, but he could do a little ballet step down the sideline to get a first down against Florida in that championship game. But what made Greg stand out to you then? His work ethic, for one, um, he was very smart. He always took what the defense gave him. He never tried to overdo it. Um, he never made uh, a lot of mental errors. He just was—he was just an all-around football player, and had uh, he had the IQ for the game. Now, when you look at when you look at this wide receiver wide receiver room for the upcoming season and the defensive back room starting off here at wide receiver, Alabama knows what it's got in Jalen Waddle. They know what it has in Devontae Smith. Who would be the third guy? Who are you looking at to potentially emerge as number three here? I, I can't really say. I don't um, because I don't. I know a lot of those guys that they're uh, um, are hungry. Some guys been there three years and had to wait. Uh, Terrell Shavers, I want to believe, was highly recruited. He was a big time guy, and I'm quite sure it's been taking a toll on him not playing as much as those other guys and not having a name. So I I never put it on one guy because uh, I know what it takes to to you know be that person because it was all about when I was in school it was all about you know. The first couple of years, it was all about Julio. And then it was all about uh, the year we wanted didn't have a, a go-to guy, as the fans would say. We didn't have a Julio Jones no more. But, uh, you know, we ended up winning the championship without a Julio Jones, or a so-called number one receiver. But, you know, uh, that was just fuel to my fire. So, I know some of those guys. If you if you're a football player, you you hear what what's said in in the, in the world. So you just add fuel to your fire and go out there and prove everybody wrong. Now you, you you mentioned something right there, Marquise, where you talked about you know that added fuel to me, that added fuel to your fire. So going back to 20, the 2011 season where it was on you. You led the team in receiving yards with 627 in getting that 2011 championship. Going into that season, going into that season, what were some of the things that the coaches told you, teammates told you, most importantly, what were some of the things you told yourself going into that year, knowing that, okay, you know, Julio's gone, it's my time, I'm going to run this wide receiver room? Uh, I don't think, I always ran the wide receiver room from, you know, after DJ Harden left, I ran the receiver room, so. It was all about, I mean, the media got their own story and what they say, but 
Yeah, uh, so my senior year, my last year, it was it was all down here. Everything was moving slow for me. So I knew we had a I, I knew we had a great team though. And I knew I had other people around me that could make plays and, and could do some things to help the team. So it was never all about me. It was all about what we could do as a group collectively. And I felt like we was the best team in the country. Now, for a lot of players, and of course, not for a lot of players, but for a lot of people in the media, I myself included, we don't get that opportunity to see the the personable side of Nick Saban. Yes, we may see the young inside or him, you know, quote unquote, maybe roast a guy here and there in the media room, but we don't get a chance to see the the funny side, the joking side, the personable side of Coach Saban. Any funny, uh, any uh, interesting story that you had, you know, around your head coach? Uh, I have plenty of stories, though. You know, uh, one time we was in the meeting room right before practice. We was in film, and uh, he got on me about something. So I came out to the practice field, and we were doing warm. We was warming up, and uh, he came by me, slapped me on my butt, and said, uh, "Maze, you still mad at me?" And uh, or and then I was like, "Nah, you all right?" Hey, did, hey, like Marquise, playing. did that catch you off guard? <laughs> No, 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 because he, he always was like this. So uh, then later on, he said, you, you, you still want to fight me? So it was, you know, it was, one thing I can say about Coach Saban, he never, he never held any grudges towards none of the players. You know, uh, he might holler at you one play or a couple of plays, but after that, he, he on to the next play, and he definitely – don't hold grudges. He's definitely not mad at you after. Well, head coach Nick Saban is looking forward to the upcoming season, trying to go after championship number seven overall and number six at Alabama. But we're joined here live graciously by former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays, two-time BCS national champion, played from 2008 to 2011. Marquise, appreciate you, man, so much for taking time to spend with us here, man. You be safe, man, and be good out there. All right, you too. Thanks for having me. That was former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays joining us here on the show. We're going to take a, another break here, but upon our return, we dive back into your phone calls, tweets, text messages, thoughts, questions, and concerns after this. menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in line on a Friday, hottest show on the streets, best form of Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information in my own words, the podcast. Yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to smash the like button, give a thumbs up on the show, hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, that lets us know that we got to continue here at TDA to give you the best in news, notes, information, and content. But it's back on you, your time, Tide Nation, 205 448 1358. And I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard, voice your opinion, 205 448 1358. But as you're getting your thoughts together, we're going to jump back into this 
chat line here on YouTube where we pick up Philip, How Philip of House Harris. Philip of House Harris writes in, who in the NFL would you compare Henry Ruggs to? Good question. We had Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver, on the show Wednesday to tackle this very same thought. Uh, Tyree Kill comes to mind of the Kansas City Chiefs for Henry Ruggs. I also look at uh, Debo Samuel of the uh, San Francisco 49ers. I also look at Deshaun Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. I think Ruggs could be a faster, quicker version of Deshaun Jackson. Now, Jackson's good. He's really good. But he's getting up there in age. And the Eagles really don't have that quick twitch receiver. I don't, though, I don't think Ruggs would still be on the board by pick 21. If he is and you are Doug Peterson, you better make the move. But I would compare Henry Ruggs to Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel, and Deshaun Jackson. But we appreciate filling up House of Harris for writing that question in there. Let's see here. Devaris Trendsetter writes in Road Tide. And a Road Tide to you, Devaris Trendsetter. Uh, Jay Lee writes in, Ruggs, a smaller Percy Harvin. I could see that. Smaller Percy Harvin, he can return kicks, return punts, play wide receiver. You know what? Play on special teams. So I, I, I would give you that, Jay Lee. I would give you that. Small Percy Harvin. Could maybe be better than Percy Harvin. Hint, hint, could be. But I can see that, Jay Lee. I can see that. Let's see here. Moving on down the list here. Waylon writes in. Two-time champion, Mr. Mays, is in the house at TDA. Yes, he was in the house during the previous segment and said Nick Saban slapped him on the butt. Would I be okay with Nick Saban slapping me on the butt? And I don't know. I just don't know. You know what, though? It's Nick Saban. So a slap on the butt from Nick Saban could lead to me being a million-dollar guy. Who knows? Slap on the butt from Nick Saban could lead to me getting a $1 million contract at some point. So you know what? Even though it would be kind of iffy having Nick Saban pat me on the butt, I don't know. I don't know. That, 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 that's just something I'm going to have to get back to at a later time. But continue, continuing the chat line here, Samuel William Wilkinson writes in, thank you, Marquise, once again. Thank you for asking my question, Stephen M. Smith. No problem there, Samuel William Wilkinson. Hopefully, you know, Alabama can get more in-state talented receivers to stay in-state because I know – it was difficult watching Justin Ross go to Clemson when Alabama really thought it had him. And it was difficult watching E.J. Williams from uh, the same school, Phoenix City, or, or Central in Phoenix City, go to Clemson when Alabama thought it had him as well. Let's see here. Frederick, uh, Fred Turner giving us a bunch of high fives, a bunch of hand claps. Appreciate that. So is Jay Lee. Jay Lee writes back in. He's better than Greg. Might not be smarter, but better, referring to uh, Mac Jones. Now, hold on now. Mac Jones got his degree in three years. Hold on now. Mac Jones graduated with that red cap on. You know what that means? Brother smart. Brother is mentally gifted. Brother graduated with a 4 if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, don't, 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 take, don't, don't rob Mac Jones of the, of, of the smarts. Now, he, he got the brain power on him. We're going to continue here with Waylon saying that he's got a great poem for Monday about Mr. Mays. Hope he hears it on Monday. He deserves it. So Waylon already getting his poem prepared for Marquise Mays on Monday. But continuing with some thoughts here, guys, hit us up in the chat line. Also call us, 205-448-1358, 205-448-1358. But I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard on the show. You can text with that number, leave a voicemail with that number. If Twitter is your thing, you can tweet the show directly at In My Own Words TDA. That's it, In My Own Words TDA. You can also tweet me directly at Coaching M. Smith. We actually have a poll going on on the In My Own Words TDA Twitter account. The poll goes, which positional unit would have benefited the most from the A-Day game? Which positional unit would have benefited the most from the A-Day game? As you all know, the game would have been on Saturday if not for the coronavirus pandemic. So go to and In My Own Words TDA right now and check out the poll voting for your positional unit that you felt like would have benefited the most from the A-Day game. But continuing here 
with some thoughts in the chat line. Troy E writes in 205 RTR. Appreciate the roll tide there from Troy E. Let's see here. Willie 351 writing in. JP, send me that beat. I might make an album out of this. So, John, John Ivor, if you can hear me in the production studio, uh, if you got that beat, please give it to Willie 351 so he can drop this album. He's probably going to battle J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. I, I, I don't know if he's going to win the battle. He may. But just give him the beat when you get the chance of getting out of the production room there. But that comes from Willie 351 here. Uh, continuing here with some thoughts in the chat line continue to hit us up Waylon writes in the show is on fire with the fire emoji appreciate that Waylon for that but continue to hit us up in the chat line we go to another break here on the show upon our return i will give my thoughts on uh, the five positional units that I felt like would, would have benefited from uh, having an A-Day game. And we'll touch it up right after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. What's going on, Tot Nation? Now, Steven is on a break right now, but he don't know what A-Day is. So I'm Coach Smith, and I'm going to give you what A-Day really, really is. Now, if we did not have this coronavirus, this COVID-19 pandemic, everybody would be at Bryant Dennis Stadium tomorrow, Saturday, 1 p.m. Central Time. So in honor of this great day, in honor of this event, I'm gonna get into the five positional units that would have greatly benefited from the A-Day. Y'all ready? I said, are y'all ready, ready? Okay, let's go. And number one, give me the entire quarterback room. Mac Jones would have benefited because this would have been his time to grow more, develop a bit more, learn a bit more, and show y'all that he can take this team and win a national championship. Now, in terms of Bryce Young, Cali Swag from Santa Ana, California, uh, this has been his moment to cash in on all his hype. He would have been able to show y'all, I can throw it, I can run it, I can razzle dazzle, I can put butts in the seats, I can have women going, Sister God, Sister God, did you see Bryce do it? Did you see Bryce do that little thing, thing, thing? And I can have all the fellas going, Brother Man, Brother Man, Bama got a QB down there, Bama got a quarterback down there, and there's none other than Bryce Young. But hold up now, y'all, hold up now. For Talia Tungavangoa, oh, he could have done this. He could have said, hold now, whoa, 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 now. There's another Hawaiian native on this roster. There's somebody else that can slang them coconuts and pineapples just as good as Tua could, and it is King Drip Leah. And this is my time, baby, my time to shine. And then Paul Tyson, a young man who had six throws in last year's A-Day game, could say, you know what? 
My great grandpappy built this school, but let me show you I'm a little bit better. I'm thinking of the name of my great grandpappy, but that's just the quarterbacks. The number two group that would have benefited is gotta be the running backs, Trey Sanders and them three freshmen. Now hold up now. Trey Sanders has never played a game in an Alabama uniform before. So this would have been the first moment we could have seen Trey shaking and baking and quaking and two-stepping his way into the painted grass for a touchdown, baby. And on top of Trey, you've got Jace McClellan, the hometown kid, Roydell Williams, out of Hueytown from the Birmingham area. And then you have Kyle Edwards as well. So running back, would have been number two. But number three position that would have benefited, what do I like more than a two-piece meal or a two-piece suit? How about a three-piece suit? I like the tux, the hat, and the cane. That don't mean I'm old. I just like the cane, too. So we like Jalen Waddle. We like Devontae Smith. But this game could have showed us who's number three. Is it Matchy? Is it Shavers? Is it Williams? Is it Bowden? Is it Javon Baker? Is it Trayshawn Holden? Is it Thayu Jones-Bell? Who the heck is it? The A-Day game would have showed us that. The fourth thing that would have been beneficial or the fourth positional unit. How about those defensive linemen? Come here, big boys. And I'm talking about those defensive Defensive tackles. DJ Dale coming back from that injury. This would have been a big A day game for him. But how about big Ishmael Sopcha at 6'4, 334 pounds out of Louisiana where Gumbo and Benier runs wild? He's dropped some weight. He could have worked with one um, Freddie Roach. I know Coach Roach, great guy. He would have had a leg up on Tim Smith, on Jamarian Langham, and Jamil Burroughs. The defensive line would have greatly benefited. That's number four. And last but not least, I'm telling you, last but not least, the fifth group that would have benefited, the defensive secondary. Pat Sertan, Josh Job, Daniel Wright, Jordan Battle, Jalen Armour Davis, all of those young men in that back five would have been able to get on the field and show what they can do on that football field. But that's just my five positional units that would have benefited from the A-Day game. My version of an A-Day game. Hold on. Oh, snap. I think I hear Steven coming. Get the heck out of here. All right, y'all. Rip roll time. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. Uh, so, uh, guys, um, I, I'm, I'm back inside the building, and uh, I was I was just coming back in. I could I declare to y'all, I saw Coach and M Smith. I call I saw Coach Smith running down the hall. Did y'all let him do my segment? Got his oh, J J B J John. John, John, you supposed to be having my back, man. John, I, John, I, I'm docking your pay. Coach, 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 you gave me. You know what? Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Coach Smith, hot dog. Coach Smith, I'm gonna get him. Coach Smith then came in here, took my segment. Got nothing else to talk about. You know I want that eight day segment. You know what? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Still Friday. I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, folks, if you want to know the best in news, notes, and information, you want to know where to find the best in news, notes, and information, you can get it by downloading the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. Very easy, very simple to do. You can get this from your iPhone app store. 
if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you just will happen to have the Android phone. The podcast options if your audio listening pleasures just will happen to be iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Overcast.fm, TuneIn Radio, or iHeartRadio. We have you covered. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I will return on Monday, continuing the conversation that is Crimson Tide football. But as always, I leave you with these three things. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, value your husbands. Children, get those chores done. Still find ways to legitimately not be bored. Get those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself, protect the people around you. And until next time, folks, this has been In My Own Words.